The geographical location of the Northeast makes Southeast Asia a natural trading hub. The trilateral highway connecting India with Myanmar and Thailand is expected to increase trade significantly and transform the region. But this would require massive infrastructure development to ensure smooth and hassle-free movement of goods and people through these linkages. In this report, we look at the potential of transforming the Northeast into a trading hub. The Northeast of India is so strategically located that it has various natural advantages as a trading hub. In fact, the vision statement of ASEAN India's summit in New Delhi in 2012 had talked about increased trade between the Northeastern region and ASEAN. It aimed at an ASEAN India free trade area with a combined GDP of $3.8 trillion and eventually at the integration of East Asian economies. While that may be the vision, at present, networks have to be created to facilitate trade. When it comes to the Northeast, what, what really disunites them is uh, the lack of institutions, the lack of infrastructure, lack, lack of the basic amenities, right? And that really, uh, that really you know, brings in issues of disunity among the Northeast. Whereas, if given the same situation in, say, North India, given the same situation in South India, uh, you have such sophisticated, such highly developed uh, communication facilities, infrastructure. And I think if given that, Northeast, Northeast uh, would be one of the most integrated regions. Now, any projects in Northeast is given as a top priority at the moment, I can see. They have a separate uh, ministry working for that. And uh, FIO has been working with the ministry down here. Uh, in many things, popularizing the Northeast products, uh, Northeast opportunities in other part of India. We had recently had a meeting with very big meeting in Bombay and uh, Bangalore. We called the entrepreneurs and we have shown them the opportunities in the Northeast Asia. So not Northeast uh, India. Uh, so these are the measures the ministry government is doing. I can say that the Northeast, the concessions are very high. The decisions are taken very fast and we had to do that. The only thing is that we had to, if the load linkage, linkages will be made easier, more entrepreneurs can really go and invest in that place. The topography of the region is not designed for large-scale business operations. Small and medium enterprises function in the manufacturing space, producing a wide variety of commodities, from silks and handlooms to bamboo wear and decoration pieces. But once connectivity issues are sorted out, linkages will open up opportunities for warehousing along the land routes. See, the linkage, what we are thinking to go from uh, Northeast to Myanmar route to the forest. There, there, there should be other linkage also to be connected from the Indian main land also, or India's main road routes also should be established much better. So the goods can flow from here and goods reach out to the Northeast so that manufacturing can take place and uh, many warehousing can take place in that places. That need also had to be looked into, not only in the forward plan, the backward integration should also be established. That's what I feel that then the advantage will be more to the people of the Northeast. The products of the Northeast are in demand across India, but due to a lack of marketing infrastructure, artisans are not able to build on these markets, both west in the vast Indian landscape and east into Southeast Asia via Myanmar. Expanding the market for these products with ASEAN countries through official or semi-official bodies will assure a better price for artisans. Well, I would feel Northeast, if the borders are open for international trade, like between Holland and uh, you know Germany, or sorry, between France and Germany, between China and Mongolia, between Thailand and uh, Myanmar. If, you know, if if such kind of borders are developed, modern sophisticated border trades are developed, then 100 kilometers this side, 100 kilometers that side would develop with the help of so many industries. You know, small and medium enterprises, natural resources based, service based industries including health, on education, on tourism, on banking, right? This kind of perspectives are still not available in the Northeast, right? This is why we have been saying that Northeastern Council and the Ministry of Development of Northeast Region should really re relocate itself in the Northeast, 
really reposition itself in the North is in terms of bringing newer areas of development. North East, as I told you, uh, right now, there is certain manufacturing is being done there. Handicrafts are there, tea is like there. And uh, like that, so many things are there. But the advantages will come when the land routes starts to flow via Myanmar. Already there is a land route to Bangladesh, which is a which is an advantage point. And once this road they are establishing between uh, Manipur, Nagaland, and uh, Myanmar, once it starts to flow, the advantage of northeast will be doubled and tripled and everything. So then, once the route starts, the many many investment will come in there. A lot of warehousing will start to come in. Even the people will start to manufacture things there. And so the Northeast is placed in a most advantageous position. The only thing is, at the moment, there is no really good route to get out of that thing to Myanmar. But once the road, the road link is laid, it is, will not be only focused on Myanmar, but focused on the whole of China and all these uh, forest countries. The land route will be established. And I think that Northeast it has a very good potential in the future. What is required is a very good regional planning body in the Northeast, which would strike a balance between modern development dynamics and the conservation of traditional cultures, heritage, and such kind of things. We don't have that a planning body. We have a Northeastern Council today, right? Manned by just two members. Not, you know, majority of them are you know, support staff, right? Where is that professional staff? Where is that professional team in the Northeastern Council, which is supposed to be a regional planning body, right? That really looks into the entire gamut of development issues in the Northeast. We don't have that, right? It has to deal with migration. It has to deal with cross-border, you know, trade. It has to deal with the integrations with the rest of the country. It has to deal with communication, technology, you know, roads, transport and all. We don't have that kind of body. So I think, I think in the course of next one decade or so, Government of India should really emphasize upon developing a wholesome professional body, right, in the Northeast, like that of Planning Commission here in Delhi, to really push forward this agenda of transforming Northeast region. See, we have, in order to say, focusing on Northeast, we have opened our office recently in um, Gauhati. Gauhati, we have opened an office. We have already started programs and Gauhati will be the base, but we'll be going out inside to Mizoram, Manipur and all the places and teaching the, the local manufacturers on the export opportunities and the export procedures that we have already started. FIO is fully committed to the Northeast development. And in that way only we have opened the first office in uh, uh, Gauhati and that the, the, the work will start from there to go to all the seven uh, states of that uh, northeast. It is through trade that development will accrue in the northeast. The current limitations of connectivity would need to be broken by developing linkages through Bangladesh. Currently, the northeast is connected to the rest of India by a narrow strip of land in northern West Bengal called the Chicken's Neck. This literal bottleneck has increased supply costs of various commodities that use the land route including essential commodities. Neighbours and regional neighbours like Myanmar and Thailand can supply rice and other commodities used in the region at a much cheaper rate by cutting down transport costs. For example, the Wagga border. When the Wagga border trade is started, the whole of Punjab became very prosperous for that. And people, the prices in that land area in the near Vaga border has gone up because people thought there's a big opportunity for warehousing and goods and moving there. The same thing, similar to that, will happen in this country. Once the, the whole forest can be opened up for Indian trade. You see, that, that, that is a major intervention where we have to make, you know, opening borders for trade, cross-border trade linkages without any fears, right? And I always wonder why a country with an, with an, with, uh, with an atom bomb is worried about few smugglers, is worried about few intruders, 
right? Or a few illegal immigrants. So, so you have to, you, you really have to think big. You have to really think in terms of, you know, in a very generous manner. But what is important is how honest, how sincere, and how uh, protracted in, uh, are you in your interventions. It has to be a very, very consistent, a very, very prolonged, and a very, very protracted interventions till it starts delivering its own critical mass. See, any goods produced in the, uh, the eastern part of India, not necessarily northeast alone. Of course, northeast product will be the first one who will have the less freight uh, uh, rates on that because they are originating from northeast. But even from the eastern part of India, all of uh, the Bihar and other places, commodities can move into that goods. Commodities can go. Manufactured goods can go. All the market of Southeast Asia, China, China itself is a market. China is going to be a very big market in the future. Uh, not resting to one items. If the route is clear from right from the mainland to there, then the, everything can go through that route. The once the route is established, the development takes place in that area. The whole area develops. Uh, institutions in the northeast means government departments. How many government departments? Their deployment opportunities in the government departments are saturated. So there are three major institutions, right? which need to be developed. One, private sector. The other one is NGO sector. And the third is major national institutions. I think these three sectors will drive the entire economy, society in the Northeast in a very, very positive, in a very, very, what you call it, effective manner. Yeah, but all these three institutions are neglected. Only in the last five or eight years, we find Government of India taking keen interest in developing institutions. But just opening an institution will not do. You know, how to make that run, that institution run, one. Secondly, which are the, where do you get the human resources to run that institution? Because even if you are able to take a good set of people from rest of India to start a university, after 10 years, it will generate a set of critical mass from within Northeast to run such kind of institutions. That process has not started. I must tell you that process has not started.